Let us pray. O God, who by the passion of Christ your Son our Lord abolished the death inherited from ancient sin and by every succeeding generation grant that just as being conformed to him we have borne by the law of nature the image of the man of earth so by the sanctification of grace we may bear the image of the man of heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever Celebration of the Lord's Passion, first reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant will prosper. He shall be lifted up, exalted, rise to great heights. As the crowds were appalled on seeing him, so disfigured did he look that he seemed no longer human. So will the crowds be astonished at him, and kings stand speechless before him. For they shall see something never told and witness something never heard before. Who could believe what we have heard, and to whom has the power of the Lord been revealed? Like a sapling, he grew up in front of us, like a root in arid ground. Without beauty, without majesty, we saw him. No looks to attract our eyes, a thing despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, a man to make people screen their faces. He was despised and we took no account of him. And yet ours were the suffering he bore, ours the sorrow he carried. But we, we thought of him as someone punished, struck by God and brought low. Yet he was perceived through for our faults, crushed for our sins. On him lies a punishment that brings us peace and through his wounds we are healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each taking his own way, and the Lord burdened him with the sins of all of us. Harshly dealt with, he bore it humbly. He never opened his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep that is dumb before its shearers, never opening its mouth. By force and by law he was taken, would anyone plead his cause? Yes, he was torn away from the land of the living, for our faults struck down in death. They gave him a grave with the wicked, a tomb with the rich, though he had done no wrong, and there had been no perjury in his mouth. The Lord has been pleased to crush him with suffering if he offers his life in atonement. He shall see his heirs, he shall have a long life. And through him, what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light and be content. By his sufferings shall my servant justify many, taking their faults on himself. Hence I will grant whole hordes for his tribute. He shall divide the spoil with the mighty for surrendering himself to death and letting himself be taken for the sinner while he was bearing the faults of many and praying all the time for sinners. The word of the Lord. <coughs> the responsorial psalm. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice set me free. Into your hands I commend my spirit. It is you who will redeem me, Lord. In the face of all my foes, I am a reproach, an object of scorn to my neighbours and fear to my friends. Those who see me in the street run far away from me. I am like a dead man, forgotten in men's hearts, like a thing thrown away. But as for me, I trust in you, Lord. 
I say, you are my God. My life is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of those who hate me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your love. Be strong. Let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. The second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the supreme high priest who has gone through to the highest heaven, we must never let go of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as if we had a high priest who was incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident then in approaching the throne of grace, that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. During his life on earth, he offered up prayer and entreaty, aloud and in silent tears, to the one who had the power to save him out of death, and he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was son, he learnt to obey through suffering, but having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Gospel acclamation. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Christ was humbler, yet even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to John Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. There was a garden there and he went into it with his disciples. Judas the traitor knew the place well since Jesus had often met his disciples there and he brought the cohort to this place together with a detachment of guards sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees all with lanterns and torches and weapons. Knowing everything that was going to happen to him, Jesus then came forward and said, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus. He said, I am he. Now Judas the traitor was standing among them. When Jesus said, I am he, they moved back and fell to the ground. He asked them a second time, Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus, Jesus replied, I have told you that I am he. If I am the one you are looking for, let these others go. This was to fulfill the words he had spoken. Not one of those who gave me have I lost. Simon Peter, who carried a sword, drew it and wounded the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its scabbard. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? The cohort and its captain and the Jewish guard seized Jesus and bound him. They took him first to Annas, because Annas was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had suggested to the Jews it is better for one man to die for the people. Simon Peter, with another disciple, followed Jesus. This disciple, who was known to the high priest, went with Jesus into the high priest's palace, but Peter stayed outside the door. So the other disciple, the one known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who was keeping the door, and brought Peter in. The maid on duty at the door said to Peter, Aren't you another of that man's disciples? He answered, I am not. Now it was cold, and the servants and guards had lit a charcoal fire, and were standing there warming themselves. So Peter stood there too, warming himself with the others. 
the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly for all the world to hear. I have always taught in the synagogue and in the temple where all the Jews meet together. I have said nothing in secret. But why ask me? Ask my hearers what I taught. They know what I said. At these words, one of the guards standing by gave Jesus a slap in the face, saying, Is that the way to answer the high priest? Jesus replied, If there is something wrong in what I said, point it out. But if there is no offence in it, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. As Simon Peter stood there warming himself, someone said to him, Aren't you another of his disciples? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at once a cock crew. They then led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was now morning. They did not go into the praetorium themselves, or they would be defiled and unable to eat the Passover. So Pilate came outside to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They replied, Pilate said, Take him yourself and try him by your own law. The Jews answered, This was to fulfill the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the way he was going to die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and called Jesus to him and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Do you ask this of your own accord? Or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? It is your own people and the chief priests who have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, Mine is not a kingdom of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my men would have fought to prevent me being surrendered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this kind. Pilate said, So you are a king then? Jesus answered, It is you who say it. Yes, I am a king. I was born for this. I came into the world for this, to bear witness to the truth. And all who are on the side of truth listen to my voice. Pilate said, Truth? What is that? And with that he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no case against him. But according to a custom of yours, I should release one prisoner at the Passover. Would you like me then to release the king of the Jews? At this they shouted, Barabbas was a brigand. Pilate then had Jesus taken away and scourged. And after this, the soldiers twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, and they slapped him in the face. Pilate came outside again and said to them, Look, I'm going to bring him out to you to let you see that I find no case. Jesus then came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said, Here is the man. When they saw him, the chief priests and the guards shouted, Pilate said, Take him yourself and crucify him. I can find no case against him. The Jews replied, When Pilate heard them say this, his fears increased. Re-entering the praetorium, he said to Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus made no answer. Pilate then said to him, Are you refusing to speak to me? Surely you know I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you. 
Jesus replied, You would have no power over me if it had not been given you from above. That is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater guilt. From that moment, Pilate was anxious to set him free. But the Jews shouted, Hearing these words, Pilate had Jesus brought out and seated himself on the chair of judgment at a place called the pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. <clears throat> it was Passover preparation day, about the sixth hour. Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. They said, Pilate said, Do you want me to crucify your king? The chief priests answered, So in the end, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. They then took charge of Jesus, and carrying his own cross, he went out of the city to the place of the skull, or as it was called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him with two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote out a notice and had it fixed to the cross. It ran, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This notice was read by many of the Jews because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city and the writing was in Hebrew, Latin and Greek. So the Jewish chief priest said to Pilate, Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had finished crucifying Jesus, they took his clothing and divided it into four shares, one for each soldier. His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, In this way the words of Scripture were fulfilled. They shared out my clothing among them. They cast lots for my clothes. This is exactly what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. After this, Jesus knew that everything had now been completed. And to fulfill the scripture perfectly, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of vinegar stood there. So putting a sponge soaked in vinegar on a hyssop stick, they held it up to his mouth. After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, It is accomplished. And bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. It was preparation day, and to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath, since that Sabbath was a day of special solemnity, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken away. Consequently, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with him, and then of the other. When they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead. And so instead of breaking his legs, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a lance, and immediately there came out blood and water. This is the evidence of one who saw it, trustworthy evidence, and he knows he speaks the truth. And he gives it so that you may believe as well, because all this happened to fulfill the words of Scripture. Not one bone of his will be broken. And again, in another place, Scripture says, they will look on the one 
whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because he was afraid of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave permission, so they came and took it away. Nicodemus came as well, the same one who had first come to Jesus at night time, and he brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, following the Jewish burial custom. At the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in this garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. Since it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus there. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Be seated, please. I share with you once again a very simple Good Friday prayer. When I look upon the cross, when I think of Jesus, I'm reminded of his love. Love that never leaves us. Who am I that he should die, giving life so freely? When I look upon the cross, help me to believe it. We stand for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet we may glorify God the Father Almighty Almighty ever living God who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations watch over the works of your mercy that your church spread throughout all the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for our most holy father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty ever living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favour on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you, their Maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for our Bishop Joseph, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the Church and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty ever living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for our catechumens, 
that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their innermost heart and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children, through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, to gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way to salvation. Almighty ever living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ, that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love, and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right is sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty ever living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant we pray that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you and so in gladness confess you the one true and father of our human race. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty ever living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of people. Look with favour, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of the peoples, the assurance of peace and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travellers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need 
your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be seated, please.
television cycles of Holy Communion, there will be a collection of the upkeep of the holy places in Palestine, where our Lord lived. Please stand. (coughs) 
at our Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is now. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus Christ who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, you have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ. Preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery we may have life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and ask for God's blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honoured the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for your presence. May I remind you that there will be Stations of the Cross this evening at St. Joseph's at 7 o'clock. The Easter Vigil takes place tomorrow evening at St. Joseph's at 8 o'clock and Mass on Sunday 9 o'clock and 11.15 at St. Joseph's and 10 o'clock here at St. Dominic. We hope and pray that you and your loved ones continue to enjoy the celebration and the unfolding of our Lord's sacred Paschal ministry, which we prepared for all during Lent and which began formally yesterday evening with the anniversary Mass of the Lord's Supper and the procession to the altar of repose, watching and waiting in prayer with our Lord in the Garden of the Sim unfolding into this beautiful but simple passion of our Lord Jesus Christ ceremony on Good Friday. We depart in silence. <laughs>